on today's episode, we answer your questions about us. Get to know your host. What's up? What's up? Q&A, baby. What's Q&A, baby. Q&A, baby. Q&A, baby. Q&A, baby. Q&A, baby. Welcome to the Nostalgia Test Podcast, the show where two longtime friends put their mainstream pop culture past to the ultimate test, the Nostalgia Test. All right, here it is. Manny. This is what happens when you run out of ideas. (laughs) No, this This, is not. No, because we have ideas. Oh, I guess we were like, let's take a break for a second. Yeah, why not? What? Hey, look, we've been podcasting now for two years. Bro hugs. It's been a little over two years now. Ooh. About a month Golf after. Clap. Golf clap. Yeah. Okay. So it's got me ball. Fuck all my pa. So here's what we did. <laughs> what do we do, Dan? We solicited and annoyed people with a bunch of Instagram stories trying to get some questions from you. Anything. Whether, whether it's what's our favorite anything, stuff about our childhood, about our friendship, about the podcast. We try to we put them all together and we have this insane gauntlet of questions. All over and the place. It Manny all is over just the place. totally eating on the podcast. Uh, what is that that you're eating? Clementine. Okay. So <laughs> Clementine's definitely passed the test. This shit's refreshing. Mm. Small enough to peel. Not getting away. I just had three of them as we were getting ready. And so now it smells like amazing citrus in this room. I love it. It's great. So here we are. So we're going to start. I think we'll start simple. simple. I think that's what we're going to do. And then we're oh, going to. So you're going to try to structure this. Okay. No, I'm. Well, sort of. <laughs> okay. A little. So really right off the bat we got this question from someone on twitter um and at drink local bomb i think that's how you do it at Boom. drink local and then b-h-a-m follow them on twitter and their first question was where are y'all based so manny that's pretty easy where are you based manny planet earth that's got me ball fuck all my ha no, uh, I'm based in New York, uh, specifically Long, I- Long Island, there you 516, go. all up in your lounge. Um, uh, grew up in Mineola, uh, live not too far away from there now, uh, and work in Farmingdale. There you go. I was living in Queens for a little while, like Dan for a little mm-hmm. while. Well, he's no there, no, no longer there now, but yeah, so uh, Long Island, New York. All right, Eastern, and- baby, Eastern standard time. It's 10 o'clock here. But, oh, it's and three um, hours away is Dan. Is is me. So where I'm based, LA, Los Angeles, City of Angels, California. It's always sunny. This is where we are. Um and but like me <laughs> like like Manny, I'm delirious from the last episode. But like Manny, I used to live on Long Island, uh grew up in Queens, then moved to Long Island, grew up there, met these maniacs. Um Manny and I then became friends and, you know, it was all down and uphill and downhill and uphill from there. Um, and then I lived in Queens, like he said, and now, and I moved to, uh, LA five years ago. So this is where I'm at. This is where we're based. So we're a bicoastal virtual Zoom podcast. So Manny, they, this, uh, person also had three other questions for us. They three went, others. They went crazy. They went crazy. First right. one. What is your name? <laughs> I'm Dan. I'm Manny. Mentos, the fresh maker. There you go. Next, what is your favorite color? Blue. Mentos, the fresh maker. D- Did you, you read my mind? Because mine's blue too. Used to be red. Used to be red. What happened? <laughs> I really like blue. Mentos, the fresh maker. There you go. Okay. I like so- specifically royal blue. I have to, I think like when I look at my wardrobe, it's like gray, black, and blue. Like mm. everything I have. And my green, wardrobe green. is lithology. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I was folding all my clothes yesterday, and there's one one part of my draw is just lithology merch oh that my I God. wear all the time. Like, I don't know if I have anything about lithology stuff. Shameless yeah, plugs. You like craft beer, <laughs> and you live on Long Island, and you want something local. Stop by Lithology Brewing in Farmingdale 
211A Main Street. That's L-I-T-H-O-L-O-G-Y. Pathology Brewing. Well, soon it will be Nostalgia Test March. So yeah, go. we got to start doing that. I got to buy those t-shirts. <laughs> so, all right. Gonna, I'm, oh, and then, I'm actually wearing a red shirt right now, but blue is my yeah. favorite color. Blue. So blue on both sides. Manny specifically royal blue. And here's the third question. What is the average flying velocity of a swallow? 45 miles an hour. 45 miles an hour. I think sure. I'm going to say... I'm going to price this right it and just go 46 miles an hour. All right. Let's see. <laughs> oh, we're gonna double check Are you looking that. it up? Oh, am I looking it up? So let's see. Average um, velocity. <laughs> this is riveting right here. Average velocity of a swallow, 20.1 miles per hour. <laughs> All right. So we are totally wrong. Totally wrong. There you go. And I was closer. Yeah, thank you so much for your question. Really awesome, everyone. It's very specific to the Nostalgia Test podcast. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Drink local. You like craft beer, (laughs) and you live on Long Island, and you want something local. Stop by Lethology Brewing. We got a bunch of questions on Instagram, and um, we are going to now answer those questions. And boy, they uh, range from... I mean, Come on, are, Dan. Just ask, ask a question already. Well, Come I'm on. getting to them. Where so are they? A f- they're right are you here. Looking at them? them. I'm There's no list. Them. There's right. no. I didn't write a list. Okay. So here's uh first one from our from uh, um, a friend of mine, someone I work with, um, from Jen Bankard, who runs an amazing uh, website, The Long Take. Everyone check out The Long Take. Uh, it's a great place where like she goes through all things like pop culture, watches, gives her a short and long take. On these shows from Marvel to uh, Star Wars. She was just at the Star Wars celebration. We're going to have her on the podcast soon. So really awesome question. So here we go. Which film or TV world would you most want to live in? Holy nostalgia. <laughs> that is. Whew, that's a hard one. In all time. I mean, what do you mean in all Which of film all- or TV world would I want to live in? Yeah. I'm going to just go right out and say, I'm going to go with my first instinct. And that's probably because it's just so close to my people. I'm going to say everybody loves Raymond. The food's going to be good. The clothing was comfortable and the people were maniacs and it looked like a fun time. So I'm going to say I would love to live inside the everybody loves Raymond world. Hmm. Huh. And also, yeah, no one man, died. It wasn't was, violent. Like, is, it wasn't crazy. This is a little tough. Like my first like instinct went to Back to the Future Two, but only <laughs> but but only in that that town where he's um, from. No, 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 no. I, like the food was ter- looked terrible, but like the hoverboards and like the the like the clock tower area that looked like a oh. good time. Like if I just could hang out there, mm. um. But I think it's film and TV world that I want to live in. Like, I'm like, for real though, I'm just trying to think about like, what's a cool film and TV <laughs> world. One where you have no, like, with his own threat of death. Because like, a lot of the shows too, like, someone is like, oh, I'd love to live in this superhero world. Nope. Yeah, no. No. No, because no. it's like catastrophe coming at you all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Cause like yeah, like I was thinking like I just watched Love and Thunder and I was like yeah, but that's crazy too. No. Yeah, yeah, you can't no. live in the Marvel world because the Marvel no. world is crazy and it's no. just constantly getting destroyed. No, you can't live in the Marvel world. You can't live in the Jurassic Park world. You no. can't live in the Star Wars world. Like no, that, absolutely that dis- not. That I don't want to live there. No. Um. Yeah. That's why I went sitcom. That's why yeah, I no, went sitcom. sitcom. Sitcom is good too. And I'm just trying to think which sitcom I'd like to live in. Like what world would I want to be like in front in even though the sh- the show is not that great to me, but friends just because like you got a coffee shop, mm-hmm. you got a you know rent control apartment, mm-hmm. there's foosball, you know, <laughs> you're just hanging out, you're just hanging out in that building. We're totally in our forties. We just chose two places that were like yeah, it's very out in that building. <laughs> very comfortable. You're hanging out, good food, yeah, whatever. Friends, you got turkey on your face. Pivot. Rent controlled. <laughs> is rent controlled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh um, my God. Yeah, I guess I don't. I guess like I didn't really answer that question. Um, 
Oh, wait. No. I was going to say Toy Story. <laughs> like Andy's bedroom. Good times. Wow. But then well, Andy grows up. I guess, yeah. yeah. I don't know, we gotta man, move on. Man, you're over I can't figure this. it out. I'm what, all over, what the I'm fuck are you talking? Like, yeah, so we no. got a thousand other questions, and some of them are so horrifying that, like, that's the one that tripped you up. I'm really scared. But <laughs> Jen, thank you so much, everyone. Like I said, go to Long Take, check that out. Follow her on Instagram at Subchakchai. You'll see her handle in the show notes. Okay, so here's the next question. Um, the next question is. But from the Wart podcast, so shout out the Wart at the at the uh, the Wart a podcast. Check them out on uh, Instagram. Listen to their podcast everywhere where you listen to the Nostalgia Test. And their question was: In a wrestling match, how many babies would it take before you are pinned? How many babies? Now this I don't know. I Did mean, they like mean- was that like a a misspell or this is for real? I don't know like how what you kind of wrestling babies. match? WWE wrestling match? Are we talking? Are we talking? Um, we talking like r- match like high school wrestling match? I mean, I'm going WWE. Okay, and I'm saying WWE. How many babies would it take for me to be pinned? Are we talking about a pile of babies? Like how pile many babies, of babies can get me to? Bi- so I don't know. Uh, a thousand? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. A how, baby weighs how much? I would say, yeah, I would say like three hundred babies. I mean, but am I just babies. laying there and they're just piling the babies on me, babies. or are they trying to pin me? Actually, I don't like babies, so so maybe I'm right not. Away. I'm tapping out. Mm, that might be a good solution because you know you got babies, they got diapers. You want to get the hell out of there. Yeah, I'm done with that, man. Yeah, baby maybe- cries. I'm calling the mom. Maybe Tap the first, maybe dead. from the first baby, I just stand on the outside of the one baby. count out. You know, one baby. One baby. One baby at the wart. How about that? Everyone listen to the wart, wherever you listen to the nostalgia test at the, at the wart, a podcast on, uh, Instagram. Check them out. There you go. Um, so the next one is from our good friends, friends of the show. We've been on their show. They've been on our show. Uh, Brian's been on our show. Brian Colburn from Playlist Wars podcast at Playlist Wars podcast. Their question uh, was, what is your favorite wrestling theme song and why? I've been thinking about this one. So, did you see my re- reaction to that? Like, are we talking about theme song? Or are we talking about, remember WrestleMania, the album in 1993? Yeah, dude, I, okay, so I went back and listened to that. And oh, my God. What is that? That's like I got horrible. my two by four. Hacksaw Jim Duggan Net beats horrible. people up. So bad. Bret Hart, isn't it? Yeah. WrestleMania, fighting to survive. Come on, come on. Oh, oh. Oh, man, great. All right. So what is my favorite? I would say my favorite has to be Stone Cold Steve Austin's. I knew you were going to say that. And only because I have been watching... I was watching this. There's a TikTok that does like a whole, like they basically record like documentaries of wrestling matches and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was a whole like ri- the best rivalry, uh, Stone Cold and The Rock. And they played both of them. And I loved The Rock's entrance, but they just like the, the what, like, oh man, you just like walk the mm-hmm. way you're walking in. Great. Yeah. But yeah, I guess that, that would be it. But then like if I really want to go back, back, like, is it like I'm thinking you're about to say Ultimate Warrior? No. What are you no. Gonna say? So okay, so I've been thinking about this like since I got the question, and um, and then it went down this whole hole of like who is the greatest wrestler all all time for me. Like I was thinking of that, and that might be a greatest whole wrestler. Podcast. Yeah, like I I mean I have my wow. pick for that. Um, you do. A hundred percent. You have 100%. the greatest wrestler of the all time. The greatest wrestler who was able to go, f- who is, who is the most versatile, versatile wrestler who could do everything. He, and, and do you best. like his, do you like his soundtrack? Yeah, I like his theme song, but I'm not saying it's my favorite. Okay. Definitely not. But I would say my favorite theme song of all time, because it's kind of like thinking about Stone Cold's where like the entrance like, and then you know it's Stone Cold, right? Yes. To me, uh, mine has to be the Undertaker because yeah, I knew, that, uh, I had a feeling yeah. the lights go down and it's just like, it's like yeah. 
and it's all and it's over. Like yeah. you know, it's done from there. So it's like, that. Ah, ah, sexy boy, sexy no. boy, you're not my boy toy, boy toy. You know, his, his, his character was a stripper. Dude, Shawn Michaels is the best wrestler of all time. By knew, far, hands down. That's what, it. Yeah, although I was a little bit mad at him about what he did to Bret Hart, but that wasn't his fault. He was kind of being like told by... You were, afraid, you were pissed at that, not when he threw Marty Jannetty through a glass window? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I no. think no, no, no because I liked Bret Hart during the, that those that oh, era. Bret Hart was great, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think you're right. Like someone who stood the test of time and was able to pivot and become uh, heel and then not heel and mm-hmm. just gone back and forth. My, I would say he's a close to to the Rock, yeah, as being like the greatest of all time. Yeah, and I would say if I had to go further back for a theme song. I, I was also no the theme song that was right next to that one was a uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper's theme song uh, because like it, it was good. just it was awesome and yeah. he was so crazy uh, rest in peace uh, Rowdy Roddy not uh, not Hulk Hogan nah, I don't give a shit do do you feel that Hulk Hogan is a good wrestler no Dude, I feel like he's a good performer yeah but, but I, in comparison I, to like so I used to like Hulk Hogan a lot obviously mm. we were programmed to. But in comparison to like <laughs> what wrestling became, and maybe I'm biased because like I grew up in that era. The mm-hmm. adi- it was like the Attitude Era. Is that what yeah. it's called? Yeah, the best era. Best era. Mm-hmm. The best era. Like the the stone the stone cold the mankind the the Undertaker rock. and like think about it, Undertaker lived through all that too. Like the Shawn only- Michaels and the Undertaker had some unbelievable matches the undertaker is the only one to consistently do hell in the cell and 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 the thing is it's just like he's not also the undertaker can't move that much though he did jump out of the ring a lot which was crazy fly Um, fly out of the ring you know when it comes down to it the attitude era was the greatest i feel like this is gonna be a whole that's a whole episode but like the best match of all time go oh my god best match of all time there was a match that, Sean, like, when I was a kid, Shane McMahon and, and Angle. One okay, of the best well, that was one of the best. Of but time. there was, uh, it was either it was WrestleMania, SummerSlam, or Survivor Series. I forget which one. It was Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Bret Hart, and I've never seen a person take a bigger beating in my life than, than like, I think uh, Rowdy Roddy in that in that match. It was crazy. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. Um, it was one of my favorite matches. Best another matches. One, uh, another one was really good. Was Mankind and Undertaker. The first the time I ever match. saw the first time I ever saw a body bag match. That was weird. That was weird. <laughs> or the ladder Remember matches. Remember the terrible one, the blind one, when Jake the Snake went blind and the model yeah. spray. The that was so. That's the such model. A weird era. The IRS. model. IRS. Remember IRS. We have to. We're gonna have to have a whole the episode. Repo Man. We're gonna have to have a whole episode where we where we. Just retire certain wrestlers. We just like no more. We can't have them. They're they're horrifying, really bad. Um, have you watched them lately? No, no. Vince McMahon retired. I know. <laughs> I haven't uh, watched it lately. Um, I just feel like, but the athleticism has just gotten so crazy that I don't think mm-hmm. the. I think you have to be both now. Like you have to be a great performer and be so athletic. Like. Hulk Hogan wouldn't be able to stand the test of time here. No, not at all. Not at all. No. no. Well, Playlist Wars, thank you so much. Everyone check out their podcast, Playlist Wars. Follow them on Instagram at Playlist Wars Podcast. We just got trounced in the uh, 80s one-hit wonder. Uh, Brian got 55% of the vote, which means we split the other uh, half. So. Yeah. <laughs> People just like Brian. <laughs> so our next uh next two questions come from a friend of the show someone that we know we've seen perform back in the day and uh when uh memories was just a little alleyway and that's uh bryce bryce larson he had an episode with us where we talked about one hit wonders i think from the 90s right um and really great episode everyone check that one out he did covers uh one of the oh, coolest awesome covers to have the, on. that Flowbots cover was oh. sick um so and everyone follow him at bryce larson music and we'll put uh websites like as well all the websites of everyone at, that um gave a question will be in the in the show notes but bryce has two questions the first one is how did trolls go from creepy originals to the cute trolls of today 
Well, I don't know how it did it, but it was definitely we did an episode on this on yeah, like we the did. useless toys or useless something. Yeah, everyone and check it um out. and yeah, man, trolls were creepy as fuck. So creepy, so creepy. Looking back, they were like the they were like it was like attaching a rabbit's foot to like some weird naked demon. It had a butt. <laughs> I know it did for and no everybody's reason. like, "That's a cute butt." Like what? No, and like it's weird because like, do you look like it does? It's like a troll have age. No, or just a troll. No, and then like, then now like, are trolls considered cute now? I guess they have like, well, any like animation now is considered like they have to make it cute or else like mm. no one wants to look at it. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, they, I still I'm still not down with trolls. Not down. Even though they can make. I don't care how cute they make them. They're like Smurfs. I'm not down with it. It, it just, it's just, I don't I don't want to see it. It all like goes back to remember that Gremlins movie, not Gremlins. It was another one, Critters. I've seen some of it. Yeah, yeah, With the I know, spikes yeah. and stuff. What was that? Oh, dude, trolls only remind me of that. Yeah, like if trolls were real, that's what they would look like. Yeah, yeah, cr- gross. Just like in Critters, it was a documentary, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Oh, dude, there's <laughs> there's no. What should we call it? Anything that's like, no way, if it lives under a tree, is not going to look cute. <laughs> that is hilarious if it lives under a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what have you ever like pulled up from under a rock and you're like, oh, that's cute. Nope. No, no nothing. Absolutely not even nothing. those roly polies. No. They no. like, they're cute for a moment and then you're like, oh, wait, they look terrible. They look mm-hmm. like an armadillo. And I'm scared. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> okay. So, so Brian went further and said, what made the creepy troll successful and why did people buy those things? Ha ha. <laughs> uh, because we were we were programmed to buy them. Yep. And um, that's just how it goes in this world. Yeah. Br- uh, Bryce, we were programmed by the government, like Manny said, to buy trolls because they wanted us to just look into those eyes of those creepy trolls, and that was it. And to be distracted by them, it while was they, just another. It yeah. was just another rabbit's foot. Yeah, while they, you know, poisoned our water. It was like the pet rock. It was exactly the pet rock with hair. Yeah, it was. And all horrifying. you need to do is get kids to want it, and then the parents yeah. have to get it because they want them to shut up. Yeah, that's all it was. It's it was like the McRib before the McRib came out. So it was like whenever things were going bad, they put a new troll out. They put a jewel in the stomach. They oh, the made them blue. They you know they did whatever they had to do to make sure that they could do something shady behind our backs while we were trying to buy trolls. Wow. <laughs> all right. Conspiracy theory at Bryce Larson Music. Thank you so much for the question. Everyone, check out Bryce. He's really awesome. Check out his account. He's always playing some awesome music. He's just killing it out there. Um, okay, so here we go. From um, okay, so now we have a few questions from an amazing podcast. We had them on. They were on the Aladdin show, the Aladdin episode. Everyone, check that one out. From I Hate Your Taste in Movies, check them out on, uh, check out um, Hate Your Taste Pod on Instagram. Check them out wherever you get our podcast. Really hilarious podcast. I mean, so funny. So their first question is, favorite film franchise? Fast and Furious. Really? One of my favorite, most favorite franchises of all time. It's a freaking superhero movies Mm -hmm. uh, at this point. I Mm -hmm. never, the second one is meh. But a- after that, I could literally watch. Mm. And, like you put it, if like if I go, on, if I had to rent a house that had nothing but Fast and the Furious DVDs, I would not be upset. Mm. And and this is funny because I've only seen one of them, um, and I would I could see just watching all of them. Um, Same well, movie. I, I, yeah, of course, and it's all first just, one is Point Break, and it's just a remix of Point Break over and over again. Absolutely. <laughs> So I would say, and then say, you just got to get wrestlers in there. You have to. The Rock. There you go. The Rock. Um, John Cena made it in there. Oh my god. Yeah. So insane. Just so waiting insane. for mankind to show up. No. No. <laughs> I'm. Uh. My. I mean, it sucks because of, like the last one of these movies in this franchise was terrible, but I can like watch it without 
having to deal with it probably or still watch it and whatever. But I love the Indiana Jones franchise. To me, I love the all three and then there's that fourth terrifying one, but I could probably watch it ironically. I love Indiana Jones. I think Indiana Jones is funny. I think Indiana Jones has got great adventures and I think it's just Do you think they should movie. reboot uh, Indiana Jones? Like I know like they're trying reboot. to make they were trying to make like um they were trying to make Shyla Shyla La Bouffe La Bouffe um they were trying to make him the next like Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah. But uh, I kind of don't see him in that role. Um I don't think I'm not taking away from him being a fantastic actor. Um well, I don't know about acting. He does he does wordplay really well. He's a good rapper. But um <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta I be would, really hot over there. What are you talking? Have about? you have you seen him? No, freestyle. No, Dan, you gotta watch him freestyle. He's okay. good. Anyways, if I we don't get ten thousand downloads. I'll watch it. <laughs> I don't see him as an Indiana Jones no character. No. I think Indiana Jones should never be rebooted. They want to make a fifth one. I think they're going to. I'm really scared. But who's um, the, who's going to take over his adventures? No, he's going to be in it. Harrison Ford's going to no, be I in it. No, I understand, but someone has to move on. Like, you know, like uh, how they did Creed? Like, can can we get a an Indiana Jones-like kind of guy? I mean, I think you can. And I Ryan think Reynolds? Could, no, no, he's, too much he's of a wise too, ass. no, he's too, yeah, he's Ryan yeah. Reynolds in all his movies. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. I mean, which, by the way, I have an answer to that in the face-off question. Oh, okay. Now, look, I don't know if you need to reboot. I don't know if you could like you. You even need a uh, a man to even step in to be Indiana Jones. The Ooh, next Indiana Jones could be a well, woman. I like this, right? I like why it. not? Um, so why not make them, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on everything right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. And for some reason, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, but, but I don't know if she could do it either. I don't know. I think you just have to open up the pool a little more and just allow anyone to be the next Indiana Jones. So, so, you know, so forth. So I don't think you need, I think you could continue these stories, but they don't have to all be men. I like the woman in that plays. She's now in the series, a uh, time traveler's wife. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no idea she's red hair. She was in um man, I gotta I gotta get her name. She was in King, um 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 what's that HBO Lord of the Lord not a Lord of the Rings, um <laughs> I forget. <laughs> the Thrones move the Thrones. I don't know. The Game of Thrones. I don't Game know. Game of Thrones. Movie. Anyways, she I think would be a great, great mm-hmm. Indiana Jones mm. character. Mm. Yes. Okay. Let's go. I say we make it female. I like it. I like your style. No, why here. not? Like, why Let's not? Do it. Why not? Right? They're, they're, she's, they're, she's just an archaeologist. Yeah. So anyone could do it. Sure. Let, let's bring in, uh, <laughs> who is the guy that we said should be the next, um, uh, the guy from Roadhouse that was should have been in Roadhouse? Uh, Renee, uh, oh. Oh, you were the talking guy about from the guy from Bridgerton. Yeah, yeah. Why not make him Indiana Jones? I don't Let's give do a it. shit. Make Let's anyone do Indiana Jones. I don't Let's care. Do Bring it. make Sandra Bullock Indiana Jones. Like I'm down with that. Ooh. Who cares? Ooh. I, I All mean, right. Let's right? do it. So, okay. So that's my favorite franchise. I hate your taste in uh, hate your taste in movies. Continued and said, if they remake Face Off, who yes. should be in the Travolta cage yes. roles? <laughs> yes. All right, so this was a funny question shit. because I went to like older actors, but then I'm like, are there young actors that are kind of like both John Travolta and and Nicolas Cage? They Nicolas Cage and John Travolta themselves all the time, mm-hmm. and I was like going through all. I had three different buddies. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Okay. Colin <laughs> Farrow, Ryan Reynolds. Colin Farrell and Ryan Reynolds. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Who's the Travolta and who's the Cage? Doesn't matter. They both have to act like the other person, which is phenomenal to me. But it kind of matters because the Cage part in the beginning is insane. Um. See, I don't know. See, the, here's the thing. Like, is Colin Farrell too? No. Yeah, he could play. He could play this. He could play an o- not an over actor. I think. I think the. <laughs> I think I don't know who would play. I think Colin would would, would do it. 
Okay. Then okay. I have I have just that for the hell of it. Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Oh my god. I you know, I had a feeling I was waiting I was waiting for something weird like like that's just like <laughs> straight up there's no way this is their characters there's no way they no. can't one of them they both don't no well actually I guess Brad Pitt is okay playing bad guys but when has Tom Cruise ever really played a bad guy mm. I don't know if he ever has yeah. Then I said, Matt Damon and and Ben Affleck. Oh my God! Just making fun of each other. Just do it. Just they do gotta it. do it. They gotta do it. Just have both of them in the age that they are. Mm-hmm. And Matt Damon's the cop. Mm-hmm. Ben Affleck's the criminal, and they swap. Mm. So I'm gonna go like all this. My brain just went to a weird place too. I'm gonna go Justin Long and Jason Biggs. Okay. <laughs> so it's- Justin Long and Jesse Biggs. They're like not action stars at all. <laughs> the whole time they would just be taking a beating like yeah. the entire time. Yeah. I think you just put those two in the film. Um, let's see. Let's get, I mean, we could have, um, why not just put them in a movie together to just mess with them and put The Rock and Vin Diesel in it. They you know, I had other. thought about that and I was like, whoa, they do hate each other and this would be their makeup movie yeah and that could be good mm-hmm. but then i'm like do it what about if you want to make it in a comedy and just put kevin hart in the rock okay but that that <laughs> yo no but that'd be hilarious imagine kevin hart because kevin hart could definitely impress oh. impersonate the rock did you ever see um uh central intelligence yes that's hilarious it's hilarious it's hilarious it's hilarious and like their their reign in buddy comedies mm-hmm. are, is going to come to an end soon they yeah. should end it with the face of remake. I think like we just throw it out there and I'm going to say Queen Latifah and Leslie Jones. Yes. Let's just go all out. Just Jay Farrow, Michael what about, Che. What about um, Sandra Bullock and uh, <laughs> what's what's her name? What's the other one? Shit. Shit, shit, shit. What am I thinking about? It's a female actress that's kind of like Sandra Bullock. I don't know. Or is she just her? No. Um, she was in um, Mystic Pizza. Bro, Julie Pretty Roberts? Woman. Julie Roberts and Sandra Bullock. Let's go. Let's fucking go. I say we just make all these movies. I think we just make all of them. And I feel like you, you just throw- Face like, Off an- should become a franchise. Why haven't they done that? They should just they consistently should just continue to make face just off. Keep moves. changing faces. Just keep changing people's faces. And Take just it, have them make fun, like act like each other. Yeah, like I, I've been watching some of the press junket stuff because I'm a weirdo of when uh, the new Blade Runner was out and Harrison Ford and Ryan Gosling were like just like ridiculously hilarious. Just yeah. throw them in face off. Yeah. Who cares? Why not? Like, we could do whatever. Like, it's the techno. Okay. That, I hate your taste in pod. Uh, I hate your taste in movies. That's a good one. All right. And their last one is which movie character do you think you could realistically have played? Hmm. All of them. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> realistically have played? Like a character? Yeah. Who could like you have been? I could in? act as? Yeah, like in a movie. Like, who could you have done in a movie? What movie do you think you could have been in? And like, well, I guess what character? Marty McFly in Back to the Future. I think I think you got it. I think you nailed it. I think that's I think exactly. I, that I think that's exactly the part for you. You. That's it. One hundred percent. And I think I have. I think I have to be in some sort of cop movie because I I don't know how to read lines. So like, but that like some very New York movie. So maybe like a Goodfellas or something. And I could be like Ray Liotta. All right, rest, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Did like, you I see can't another do gangster Pesci. died? You know, Sonny died. Sonny yeah. died, and um, the, oh uh, the guy we're losing yeah. all of no, the not gangsters. Sonny. Paul Servino, he passed away today. Then yes. the guy from The Sopranos passed away. Oh. Um, James Kahn, who was in The Godfather, he passed away. I probably, I would like to have been Sonny in The Godfather because, Whoa. because that's a great part. 
That's an amazing part. And yeah, great of course, part. Al Pacino's he, character dies, is great, but you know, oh. when he dies, the way he dies, he goes on the causeway. Oh Jeez. my god! Yeah, one of the best death scenes ever. I, or like, you know, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not going to say I could have been in Powder. I don't want to be in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that movie just keeps coming up. All right. Thank I, you so much. Oh, my God. Hey, hate your taste in uh, movies. Thank you so much. Everyone, check them out. Follow them. You think I could have played taste, Cocktail? Pop. You think it could have been Flanagan in Cocktail? Dude, I think we both should be in Cocktail. If they <laughs> reboot Cocktail, Bro, it you should be should you be, and You me. should be Coglin. Yeah, it's just both of us. We'll just be in Cocktail. That's it. Like That's the movie. <laughs> that's it. That's the movie. Sign us up. Yeah, hate your taste in pod. I hate your taste in pod. I keep looking at their handle. Like you hate your taste in podcast at hate your taste. Uh, hate your taste pod. Follow them on Instagram. Hate your taste uh, in movies. Really awesome questions. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. So then a fan, we uh, a fan question who um, actually answered one of the questions. Like answered uh, Jen's question of like who, what movie universe or TV universe you could have been in. Uh, uh, Andrea, she said uh, she could have lived in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory universe. I thought that was terrifying. Oh, Andrea, um, my cousin. Yeah, I hey, thought Andrea. That, yeah, she's from Canada. She lives in Toronto. I think that would have been terrifying to live in that universe. Um. Whoa, that would be crazy. Either I mean, you're, they, the well, which which version? Well, dude, either you're poor, or you're gonna get killed in a chocolate factory. Yeah, but you t- like, w- would you have liked the upgraded one with Johnny Depp, or would you have liked like the old school? I think they're if you both had to choose, terrifying. No, they're all, like they're both kind of terrifying. I'm gonna have to be in the old one. I don't want to see one? some weird like that. The other one, the colors are off. It freaks me out. Freaks you out. He looks like it. He looks like Pennywise. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I like the first one. Yeah, yeah. So, but she wanted us to do a Top Gun Maverick uh, review. Um, everyone oh. check out our episode on Maverick. We but do have an uh, episode on that uh, in depth, so we're gonna go quick on this. Loved it, <laughs> loved it. We'll watch it again. Uh, my uncle saw it. He was like, "It wasn't that great," because I think I hyped it up too much. I think you, if, Who, if wait, you stop, Bobby, yeah. Oh come on now. But I think with him is like you can't hype up movies too much with him because then he's expecting like way, way outrageous. Yeah. But I, how do you hi- not hype up this movie? This movie is fantastic. Bobby, what are you talking about? What more did you want? They are flying F-18s. They're doing what were you everything. expecting is my question. Yeah. Like, what do you want? It the was movie- a phenomenal movie. If you are trying to say- I oh, would say one. top five movies of the last, like, 10 years. Of course. I think it below. I mean, everyone's going to say probably, oh, but what about the new Star Wars? I didn't see it. Meh. I don't really want- I don't know. Like, no. whatever. And- you know, probably I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's someone out there going, nope. like, well, "What about the new Jurassic Park movies?" But I'm like, "No, nope. uh, how many more? Mo- like, once nope. the dinosaurs are released, we're dead. You can't nope. stop them." I'll tell you this: I saw Love and Thunder. Oh, the Thor movie it was great. Yeah, one of the better Marvel movies. Mm. Fun, had mm-hmm. great time. Still not as good as Maverick. No. Oh. And I saw Lightyear. And um, I thought it was good. I don't think it was the best Pixar ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I understand some people's critique on it, but I liked it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. It, it's entertaining, but don't go to rush the movies for it. Here's what I'll say. Maverick was one of the greatest summer blockbusters in the last decade, and it's probably one of the best movies in the last few years. There hasn't been a big summer movie like that in quite some time where it was literally a real summer blockbuster. There hasn't yes. been. It, it was a great and and uh, Bobby, you you know, we might have to have a Maverick Redemption episode and just like you know, understand what's your problem and bring on Buzz in the Tower and and just berate you because how can you not have liked that movie as much as I you, don't you understand? Know? I gotta I, I gotta talk to him too. Yeah, yeah. I heard it through someone else. So oh, so there's a little little gossip with spilling some tea. Spilling some tea. <laughs> All right. Uh, What's next? Thank Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much. Uh, Keep listening and supporting. Thank you. Um, All right. So this next one comes from our buddies at Measuring the Score, at Measure the Score on Instagram. 
measuring the score we had there. We were on our Rocky One episode. That was when we first started the marathon. We were in such high hopes then. Such high hopes then. <laughs> um, and we, uh, we went and also check out the episode we were on, on their, uh, on their podcast, we did the um, Nightmare Before Christmas episode, which that was yes. fun. That, that was, was really great. Fun. And their question is, which film soundtrack is your favorite? Now, they said soundtrack and not score. But I am, you know. It's, Whoa. Right. So there's now I'm kind of in between right now. Because, mm-hmm. of course, Rocky Four, phenomenal soundtrack. Phenomenal. Greatest. Amazing. A great soundtrack. But. Find myself listening to Baby Driver soundtrack a lot. Ooh. Wow. Now, I w- I'm on the same level first with you. Like Rocky 4 is like a like you don't even have to say how great of a soundtrack that is. But I have a soundtrack that I bought on CD when it when I first saw the movie. I'm like I need this soundtrack and I listened to it over and over again. And that's the soundtrack from Reservoir Dogs. Love oh. that soundtrack. I mean, the music is so weird and amazing and so specifically chosen and picked out. And when you watch the movie, which I think is probably, in my opinion, Quentin Tarantino's best film. Um, I love that film. Um, it could be like a, just a play. Like you could literally just put it on stage. It's like in one place, basically the whole time. I love that film. And the music is just so great. And there's that scene where, <laughs> Um, Michael Madsen like tortures that guy, but he's dancing to that song stuck in the middle with you. And it's so sinister, but the song is so good. And it, it, it's just it, the soundtrack to Reservoir Dogs is like one of, is probably like one of my favorites. Now, if it's score, that's a whole other thing because. Anytime I hear that music from Rocky, it's like if you're going to score, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to cry immediately. Yeah, I'm going Rocky. Rocky one. Yeah. If you're doing score, I'm going Rocky one, and then right after that, I'm probably going Jurassic Park. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Whew, thank you. Measuring the score. Thank you, everyone. Check out their podcast. So awesome. At Measure the Score on Instagram, Measuring the Score, wherever you get your podcasts, check them out, support them. Another great podcast. Manny, how are you doing so far? Fantastic, bro. Spilling the beans, spilling that tea. <laughs> so here we go. We have a question from our friends at Soundtrack Your Life at Soundtrack Cast on Instagram. We had um, Ryan on our podcast to talk about <laughs> the craziest music videos, right? There was the one like weird uh, oh, yes. most outrageous music videos. Yours uh, one, them, I think. Yep, I mean cl- Total Clips of the total Heart. Total Clips of the Heart. Um, and the question from Soundtrack Your Life is what are slash were your favorite Sesame Street characters? Um, Bert and Ernie were my favorite growing up, mm-hmm. but I think I liked Oscar the Grouch. Ah, the most. Why? Because he wasn't. I guess because he was like the opposite of every character on that show. <laughs> right? Always- he stood out more to me. Mm-hmm. He stood out the most because. Yeah. Everyone's, you know, I get, I, like, it was Oxford the Grouch. So, like, he was mm-hmm. the opposite of all these, like, happy people. I, I just was, remember that. Did you think that he had a whole, like, house underneath that can? Like, it wasn't just he was in the can and then he would pop out. Like, did you think, because I thought as a kid, he had, like, a whole, like, underground layer, layer, underground, yeah, that he lived in at when in the garbage can. Huh. Never thought about that. <laughs> Cause I, that would have been I, cool to see, like, Oscar the Grouch's, like, family. I if that wanted existed. To, I wanted to see inside the garbage can. Like, I was like, he's got to have, like, a whole world. There's no way. Like, I felt like, like he down was... down in Frogger Rock kind of thing? Yes, exactly. Like, like the Fraggles. Yeah. yeah. Fraggles, were they part of Sesame? 
No, they were Muppets, right? But they were all part were of Muppets. the Muppet but thing, yo, right? yo, Fraggle Rock was one of my favorite shows. I heard people talk about Fraggle Rock on, I, f- I think it was on uh, the Higher Learning podcast. They would talk about Fraggles. So shout out to Van Lathan, uh, Van Lathan Jr. and Rachel Lindsay at Higher Learning. Like they listen to this podcast, but I'm just going to shout them out anyway. They have a great podcast. <laughs> but um, they were talking about Fraggles and they said that they thought that they were really weirded out by them. They thought that they people going down into hell and that the fraggles like where they lived was hell oh my god <laughs> that's funny that's funny when you think back you know it who, like, like characters that freaked me out were the zippity doodock people <laughs> zippity doodah zippity yay wait, my wait. oh my they were like birds or something they were weird man well, what they were about, like oh it was weird what about zoobly zoo Ooh, that was a weird one yeah. That was a weird show. So Oscar. Okay, so I'm going to go Grover. I loved Grover. I yeah. think Grover just reminded me of Gonzo. So like, you know, he was weird and, and crazy and just kind of like all over the place. I really love, I, li- I really like Grover. Okay. Yeah. I'm down with Grover. So thank you, Soundtrack Your Life. Everyone check out Soundtrack Your Life. Follow them, Soundtrack Cast on Instagram. And we keep going. Let's get a question that was sent to us by our buddies there at the Namely 90s podcast. Everyone check out Namely 90s. Um, Here we go, Namely90s.com. Listen and find it on your favorite podcasting platforms. New episode every Monday. And they sent a little blurb. So it's like every episode, two childhood best friends look back at a month in the decade they grew up in in this nostalgic comedy podcast. So namely 90s, our friend Brandon, who Brandon was on an episode of ours where we did, what the hell did we do? 90s power ballads. Yes. Right? <laughs> that was a good episode. Everyone check out the 90s power ballads episode. But Brandon sent us something on an audio so we're going to drop it here in the in the episode so here we go hold on can i play this you should be able to can i not play it because we're recording on another oh maybe because we're recording on the other side here okay let me let me just play it this way hold on one second here we go ready Hello again, Dan and Manny, my favorite nostalgia testers on the interwebs. It's I, Brandon, co-host of Namely 90s, here to avenge the 90s power ballads we sent to the nostalgia graveyard. But not really. I just thought that sounded cool and that it was a good callback for your listeners. No, my real reason for being here is that I've brought a question that will truly help us understand you better. To reach across that temporal divide and, and learn about your souls. My question is this. If Dr. Emmett Brown, alongside Bill and Ted, show up in their respective time travel vehicles, Brown in the DeLorean with the Mr. Fusion and the hover car conversion on it, and Bill and Ted with their TARDIS ripoff phone booth, and they offered you their time machines, which one would you take, and where is the first place that you'd go with it? Okay, there we go. First of all, thank you for that. That audio was awesome. question, which is great. That was awesome. A true podcaster needs to give an audio question. Um, <laughs> Whoa, Dan. Yeah, I mean, whoa. I mean, I'm 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 impartial to the DeLorean because that phone booth was jank at eight. I know you had to hit the DeLorean's little like digital yeah. numbers, but like, you know, that phone booth. How that thing even work? And then you got to go through the wormhole and like yeah. watch that. So that's kind of cool though. Like you get to go see that, but Bill and Ted didn't seem like excited every time they went. Like they seemed scared every time. Yeah, they were screaming every time. They're like, Wah! and then yeah. The only thing that would be cool about the Bill and Ted thing is like possibly showing up in the future where you, you know what I mean? Like there's like that whole council and like checking them out, I guess. I don't know, but No, but like I he's not saying that this we're in those worlds. He's saying which would we use as mm. the vehicle to time travel? Yeah. See, the phone booth, you just got to leave, and then it's just there. Yeah, the car, you got to hide all the time. And the car, you got to hide all the time. But at least it has wheels, and you can yeah. hover it around. And you needed the that. The phone booth is, like, there and, like, can get destroyed. And <laughs> like people are like, like, in the caveman era, or, like... <laughs> the even, cowboys, yeah. when they went to the Old West, yeah. it was just like no one attacked them. Like, they came down out of the sky. I'm, I'm going hover... hover 
hover that uh hover DeLorean because mm-hmm. you can get away with uh, get away from things yeah. no matter where you go in mm-hmm. time even though you're freaking people out if you go like really far back um you're you know it's better than a hot tub time machine but like <laughs> it it uh or is it hot tub time machine you just got out of where you were anyways um which by the way was a great movie um <laughs> and I thought it was going to be bad it was fantastic um, I think the hover the hover DeLorean's better. I'm gonna say that, like, I agree. I think the DeLorean, whether it's hovering or driving, is gonna be the better time machine. I feel bad because I love Bill and Ted. Um, but it's a phone booth. You have to look for a number. You have to punch the number in. You had there's so much that you have to do. Yeah. To figure out where you're going, and plus, again, you're just dropping out of the sky. You can't yes. escape. You have to run to it and then it goes into the ground. Where like in the DeLorean, at least you could drive and you can move away from people and stuff like that. Um, Especially the hover one. Yeah, exactly. So right. I'm going to have to go with the DeLorean. Now, where am I going? That's a whole other thing because I am- First I'm, place you're going. I'm freaked out by the whole idea of going back in time at this point. Because if you touch anything, you've now altered the universe forever. So but if you go if you go forward of anything, you're not doing anything to the time. But I think you're, from now, if I if in the time I am in now, right, like 2022, I think I'd be really freaked out of what the future to go forward. I like don't know what's about well, to take what's place. What's crazy is you can go forward and then mess up the even more future from I, where you you know like if you go to three thousand. Mm-hmm. And you do something, mm-hmm. you're fucking up what was supposed to happen. Yeah. So you've like, but like, who cares too, though? I think. I mean, I, we're all gonna die. <laughs> so who cares? I think. I don't I, know. Like, I'll, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna split this question in two. Go ahead. If you're going in the future, how mm-hmm. far? How far in the future are you going? If I'm gonna go to the future, I'm going for it. Like I'm going Where? super like far. Million years future. ahead. Okay, well, not, let's not go. I'm not going to say a million. Like maybe an extra, like a uh, few. Do you want to still see yourself, or you, you no. just want to see? Like, I don't want to see myself because I don't no. want to. Like that's going to really destroy a lot of stuff. If I all of a sudden see myself, yeah, I don't want to know anything. I want to go as far in the future where, like, I won't. There's not a possibility for me to be alive, and I, I just like- want to go far, far, far into the future to see what the fuck's going on. Now, um, the question, the thing is, is whether or not the, the future, let's say the world doesn't even exist. Right. Are you now in space and the DeLorean can't, you know, the DeLorean's not set up for space travel. So maybe he's just like a thousand years. So do years you die? Well, maybe I go just a hundred years into the future then. To make sure, to think that there might possibly be There'd an still Earth. be an Earth. Right. Or maybe the Earth is inhabitable. And right, like you you die in the future, possibly. Just like, just like opening the door. Yeah. See, that's the good thing about the wormholes, though. With the phone booth, is it possible to like re-enter a new number if you see like, yo, shit's crazy. Pop, 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 pop. Bye. You know, like before you land. I don't possibly. think it's possible. No, but like I think- maybe maybe the phone would be busy if you like put in the wrong time and like it doesn't. It does like sorry. We can't connect your call because, like, Earth doesn't exist at that time. Oh, that would be crazy. That might be actually a better warning. So maybe the phone booth is good for, like, going into the future. But if I'm going back in time, I think the only reason I'm going back in time, I think, would be to see concerts. (laughs) That's it. To see concerts. concerts? Exactly. That's all I'm going back in time for. Like you weren't alive for? I'm going to Woodstock. I'm going to go see Miles Davis in concert. I'm going to go see... Um, yeah, I'm going to go see Pink Floyd. I'm going to go see all the bands that I love. And even, even just from the nineties before some of these guys died. So I'm going to go see Nirvana. I'm going to go see Sublime. Like I'm going to go see bands that I love before people passed away or before the band like was like, you know, whatever in their Wow. That's how I'm using it. Yeah. I like your thing. Cause I I don't think I'll ruin that much. Like. You're just you know, in a crowd. I'm just in a crowd hanging out. I like the idea that you're in a massive crowd. Yeah, and I don't- Because like, you're not messing up like if you're just like, you meet somebody in a cafe 
Yeah. Like one, that's one person that you might cause a big ripple even, effect. Even if I'm in a cafe. Like, right? All right. So like, I'm, I'm, let's say we're going together. The tough thing would you you would need to do for me is not let me go in the mosh pit because then I could ruin the space time continuum. No, we would <laughs> like so yeah. You know? We would go because like it. you know like I'd hit somebody in the face. Yeah, they end up in the hospital. They weren't supposed to. Yeah. They don't get to see their loved like meet their girlfriend or boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Now I ruined like the next president. What I'm thinking is like we go to like if we go to concerts we just don't talk to anyone. Like we try not to speak to that many people. Like if I was to go to like to see even like a stand up, say I was like, oh, I would love to like oh, go back I would, in time. I would see. I was about to say I would go to stand up shows. Yeah, like go see Lenny Bruce live. I'm just sitting in the crowd laughing. So yeah. all I'm doing is sitting there. I'm yeah. not doing anything else. I'll try to stay away from people. I won't even speak to anyone. We'll see the show, leave, get in the DeLorean, and get the hell out of there. Now, do we have changes of clothes for all these concerts? See, now that's another thing. Because and like, do you have we, money to buy the concert t-shirts? I mean, th- yes, money we do have. But two- That, that is transferable. Yeah, because you have Doc Brown's case of money currency. Oh, also, yes. the dollar is a dollar, dude. It, ch- it doesn't look like a dollar all the time. Like, it changed throughout time. Did it? Yeah. The dollar changed? Oh, yeah. Well, whatever. We say, oh, these are out of print. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need Doc's. Like, Doc had the the the, the currency for the years and stuff. All I think, all I'm saying is, like, we just we need the, we need that, we definitely need to have It's the clothing. DeLorean. Yes, yeah, the DeLorean, and we need the clothes. So, I think you just get- And now, are we going back to the future to pick up the clothes for the next thing, or are we just going to concerts? I think if we just have the Converse, if we just have Converse sneakers, I think we should be fine. I don't know, man. You can't go like, are we going to see Be- Beethoven? No, I don't want to go see that. You know, that's a bad time to be in. Yeah, we're going to go all the way back to Beethoven. People smell like it's like there's like. Like probably, how far back would you go? Um, 20s? Maybe 20s, 30s, 40s. So we're not going there. to a bar. We're not going to speak easy. And stuff. You need to hold me back, Dan. Oh, no, I would we're not, ripple. I would ripple a lot of things. We're not going. We're not. We're going after prohibition. I think. Okay. All right. Because the thing is, like, then and we're going to see comedy stuff. shows and yeah. rock shows. But we can't. The problem is dressing like this. We'd show up and they'd be like, we'd be attacked in two seconds. Like, who are these guys? Yeah. I think you just need a pile of white t-shirts. We need some dress shirts and ties. We need to look real basic. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think we need to come back though and change. And like, yeah, before we go to the next thing, right? So, yeah. like, say we go to Woodstock, we can't show up in like a suit and tie. No. Or could we? And then just go, like, I'm so liberated. And then just, like, you know, rip off the suit and tie. And then it's like, but would we could, end could up being. Could we be the guys that are like men in black? Like, <laughs> maybe dude, we're the theory of men in black. That's the thing I was just going to say because they made the, the Woodstock documentary. What if they're like, we're in it? Like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I like, think, me and you yeah. couldn't talk to anybody. We really probably couldn't speak to many people. And we'd have to think, like, where our parents would that were be in fun? spaces. I think it would. Why not? To I not think, speak to people? I think we'd probably end up speaking to people. We just couldn't change their We couldn't, lives. like, really say much. That's why I feel like in a life. concert is fine. Because you're not doing anything other than, like, this band's crazy, man. Blah. And whatever. You're not, like, then... You know, now are you holding back from lip syncing their song that just came out? Imagine <laughs> we just put this out. We're like, holy shit, Stairway to Heaven. We sing the whole thing. <laughs> Is it like how do these people know? Yeah, the wall. Like, bro, I'm on shrooms. I'm just predicting everything. <laughs> this is the first time we're playing this live. It's just like another brick in the wall. It's like, how do you know the words? It's like. <laughs> And then we just have to disappear. <laughs> see, that's then what made me bounce. See, that's then what made me this, the phone booth would be better because it'd be like, we just back up into it. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> concerts aren't bad because you could do like, you could just uh, blame things on trips. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think if you go to a jazz club, you just sit there in the dark. No one's talking to anyone. Could we at least go to like, no, that <laughs> I was going to say, can we go see? If the aliens came down to help the Egyptians with the pyramids, and then I'm like, oh ah, yeah, I we're gonna show be, like, up and they're gonna there. kill us immediately. No, like I just want to like go 
hover a little bit and then bounce hover. and then like be be in the drawing in the future <laughs> of a of a DeLorean flying over the the pyramid. I think if anything, maybe we try. We go back to when in the room when they were doing the Constitution. We just go in there and be like, "Hey guys, listen, you guys really fuck things up. Like we need to." Like, <laughs> you maybe need to we put take a one of year them. Expiration on this and have it be redone every. I think years. we need to take one of them or like, all of them. Be like, get in a DeLorean. Or in the phone booth. See, this is where the phone booth works. You get them in the phone booth, but they all smell. They probably have some diseases we don't have. We don't have vaccinations. No, for. you don't want to bring them back, dude. And then you bring them just to when. No, you couldn't do that. Trump you, you would alter like, a lot of Look stuff. what you did. You're 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 gonna no no no. no Damn I, it! I think you can't you can't. That's you're talking about not messing people. I things know, up. but then like you because see that's the thing. We'd have to hold back to become like these warriors, thinking like we're changing things. But we, we can't. We have to just li- literally only go there for selfish reasons, which is to go see comedy and rock. Yeah, because because maybe people might go, oh, I would go and like save all these like figures from history being assassinated, like social. It's like I want to do that, but we but don't. Then you know might not be born. What would happen? We have no idea. Might, be, that might have incited a whole war then. You know, not yeah. to say anything. This is all getting cut out. The this is scary. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Namely 90s, for an insane question. Namely doing things for selfish reasons. Yeah. And Namely 90s. Check out their podcast. Seriously, like really cool podcast. Um, namely 90s.com. Check them out. Um, every Monday, new episode. All right, so now we have a question from Georg uh, Charman, who was on our episode on an episode that I think will be out hopefully by the time this drops. It's out. Um, he talked all about nostalgia, and he sent us a really serious question, Mary. Here we go. What is your biggest regret, or how do you deal with regret? I just so, want to jump. Okay, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You said oh. you wanted to jump. Okay, right, I'm so sorry. I just want to jump right in and say, I since I turned forty. In July, like July 13th this month that we're recording this, I come to the, the decision that, um, I don't think I have any regrets. I might have things that I would like to have fixed or whatever, but when I think about it, like we're just in a time travel up thing that we were just saying, it would change everything. Yeah. All the things that I did, whether they were shitty to Pete, like shitty or not, or wasting time or whatever all led to this moment right here. So I have to kind of think that there was some, for some reason, everything happened in some weird chaos where like, if I regret something, then that means I re- I'm regretting the outcome, which is this, which I don't do. I, am I not happy with some of the decisions I've made? Sure. How do I deal with that? I, I mean, I got to forgive myself and just move through that. Right. Yeah. But I think like, I can't have regret because I enjoy this life that I have right now. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of would have to agree because, like, I could say I regret, like, taking so. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be me if I regretted things. So, like, you know, I could say there's there's some things that I did financially and I said yes to that I should have not, and that I'm still paying for today. I maybe should have like started the brewery earlier. No, like, none of that works. Like. I can't have regret because I, the only reason, way to find out and know things, it, it's like knowledge is wasted on, you know, you only get all this knowledge and figure out where you are by going through all the crap. So like the way I deal with like, yes, being upset about my choices is I gotta get, let it go. And then I get on a podcast and talk about nostalgia stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's like how we did it, but I, you know, I don't know if I right. have that much regret. I, I don't think, I think turning 40 really like, I'm just like, I did those things. I mean, I have to let it go. I have to move forward. I, there's nothing I could do to change it. There is no time machine. There is no time machine and things were happened the way they were supposed to happen. And, and even if you did change it. Yeah. Like you said, we wouldn't be here right now. No, we, we might not be here. Who knows? We wouldn't be here, and that let's would say, suck. Let's say I like, I don't know. Let's say we stayed, when we went on a road trip, I mm-hmm. stayed out in L.A. Yeah. And, and you didn't. Right. <laughs> Who, right? Yeah. That would be crazy. Who knows what would have happened? Would but, lethology exist? Would, would lethology exist? The nostalgia test even exists. 
would would we still be friends exactly and not even yeah so like would i be married would i be like and that's the thing like there's so many things that i did that like led me to all the things that i have the people that i know the love in my life everything right yeah are there people that dropped off and there are people I'm not friends with? Are there things that I, I did in my past that weren't great? Absolutely. And I'm sorry for all that and, and for, and for, you know, everything that all those things happen, but you can't, I can't keep wor- living in a space where I'm constantly regret the choices because it got me here or even have regrets of other things that I never got. Like I have a lot now. I have more than a lot, more than most people, like, you know, especially during the pandemic, I had a job the whole time. So it's just like, I could find things that I could regret, but what's the point? Like, I don't know what that would mean. I couldn't go back and change it. Um, It's just something that was part of my history and, and it led me here and I like here. So, so thank you, Georg. Everyone check out Georg's episode. It's really awesome. So Manny, I think we're at the last question. I feel like this is the last one. If I missed anyone's question, I'm sorry, but I believe I got all of them. He's sorry, but he does not regret it. (laughs) Oh, shit. We had two other questions. Oh, two more. Let's do these two questions from, first of all, hold on. I got to see them first. Okay. Because a new brand new. Oh. People coming through. Okay. So at Prime Nostalgia, first yes. of all, everyone check out Prime Sorry. Nostalgia podcast. They're killing it. Seriously. They, they it's such a an awesome show. Um can't wait to collaborate. Can't wait to like get you know, get you guys on and we do something really cool. But um just to give you a little um information prime nostalgia pod on instagram prime nostalgia podcast check them out on instagram hit that link tree check out their uh, their podcast they're really cool really awesome guys and their question they have two questions actually people are getting people are doubling up on these questions so here we go the first one is yeah what's the funniest encounter with a crush you've had <laughs> uh-oh Hmm. Hmm. You can go first. I think this is this is this is what I'm going to say about this. Anytime it was a bad, anytime there was a funny moment or like an embarrassing moment, it all had to do with me being way too drunk for my own good, and then that person and then, and then talking too much to someone for no reason. And like anytime in this situation, that's what it was. Like it was. It was a New Year's Eve party and I saw this person and I was just like, just like, bleh, just talking and talking. And they had to listen to me and like, just kind of grin because they were just like, I have nothing. I'm trapped by this drunk person. And like, it wasn't like anything weird or creepy. Well, maybe it was weird, but like that to me is the anytime something like that happened, it was because I was too drunk for my own good. And that is the reason alcohol sucks because it creates these situations that all of a sudden the next day you're just like, I did that. Great. And then you have to see that person in reality outside of anything else. All right. I mean, I'm trying to think a crush, a funny encounter. I can't, I don't know if I could even think of that far back, but yeah, it, m- if I could think as far back as like past, like in high school years. Yeah. Mine was in high school. So yeah. Hmm. I mean, I say there was another moment that where like I was in fifth grade. I just moved to, to Long Island. Everyone thought I was from Brooklyn and I was from Queens. So I was like this new kid, like, Oh wow. Has crazy New York accent. Um, and I didn't know what it meant to like give a girl a hat. So now I'm, this girl's boyfriend i guess and then i went to her birthday party yeah she was wearing my hat now all of a sudden we're like uh, like whatever and then i had and it wasn't like an embarrassing thing with a crush but it it was an embarrassing moment because it was embarrassing to be called out for at this girl's birthday party afterwards this person's mom in the parking lot no i'm in fifth grade their mom's like 
are you taking my daughter to the dance? I'm like, I'm in fifth grade. Oh, my God. And I got yelled at Scary. by someone's parent about that. And I was just like, what is happening? So that's, that's some scary stuff right there. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, it was, it, it's like things are just awkward then. I remember, um, yeah, my, my first kiss that I ever had with my wife, we were crushing on each other. We were at your house for a party and we didn't really want anybody to know. Mm hmm. That we were crushing on each other, so we went and had the worst first kiss on the corner outside of your house. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> like, if that kiss happened now, it'd be like, do we even want to be together? <laughs> it was terrible. It was as if we both forgot how to kiss. Do party kisses are the worst. Oh, they are the worst. Oh, They're gross. God. They're gross. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, hey, oh. right, well, thank, right. thank you. King Prime, uh, you know, and here's his next question. What's your least favorite brand of potato chips and why? Oh, we to, did a potato chip episode. I think this is going to be a very easy one for See, me. See, mine is like, what is it, Ruffles? Ruffles? Is that what it's called? The Ruffles? Is Ruffles the brand? I think it's the brand. Is that the brand or is that the style? I What's don't know. yours? Mine's Pringles. I'm done with them. I'm done with Pringles. Overall, they just don't taste right. It's like someone chewed up. It's like a bird ate a bunch of potatoes, spit them back up, and then they shaped it into a potato chip, which is exactly what a Pringle is. It's just potato paste. Yes, I would say you can't dip Ruffles them. Is, Ruffles is second place to me, especially the onion one. Fucking terrible. Um, but yes, Pringles. Fuck Pringles. I don't know how people like that vote that you did, and people like said that it passes. That's They're not nuts. a chip. It doesn't taste chip. like a chip. No. You described it perfectly. It's regurgitated potatoes. It's garbage, and Pringles are trash. And they no one takes Pringles to a party. No one cares about your Pringles. It is exactly. No one what, shows up to pring to, to a party with Pringles. <laughs> no, and it you is, don't show up with a tennis ball holder to a party. Exactly what Mitch Hedberg said. They showed up at the factory with a truck full of potatoes and Pringles. Like fuck it, cut them up. That was the attitude, and that's the attitude of that chip. It's trash. It's trash. It's trash. It's trash. Move Thank on. you. Thank King you. Prime Time. Everyone follow Prime Nostalgia uh, and then on Instagram. Check out there the Prime Nostalgia podcast wherever you listen to your podcast and follow King Prime Time, KVNG Prime Time on Instagram. Thanks for the questions. Awesome. And now we come to our final question. It's the final countdown. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, hold on a second. It was an homage to the, I know who it is. So, You know who it is? They love the 80s. They love the 80s. Was that an 80s song? Yeah. It's our, it's our buddies over there, Buzz in the Tower. Everyone, Buzz in the Tower. Check out Buzz in the Tower, 80s podcast, all 80s, all the time. At some point, they're going to run out of stuff, maybe. But I think- he, <laughs> I don't think they can. No, they won't. They no. got. They always find something. Um, yeah. They were on a Rocky it's, Four episode. They do a lot of like recasting episodes. Yeah. Which is great because, like, you you would think like, oh no, I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Like that's that, that's good stuff. I'd love to be yeah. on a recasting episode. That yeah. would be fun. But uh, you could uh, check them out on our Rocky Four podcast, a Rocky Four episode, and they made a guest appearance on the Rocky Redemption episode with our buddy Steve Herrera. So check that episode out when they jump on. But Buzz in the Tower, check them out. Follow them on Instagram as well. At you know, buzz in the tower. That's B U Z Z N the tower. And here we go, Manny. So, what was your favorite movie before you were ten years old? <laughs> so, <laughs> this was difficult. I was thinking about it today, and I was like, "All right, that means 1991, 1992 for me." Um, and I came up. My answer is Drop Dead Fred. <gasps> Drop Dead Fred. I love Drop Dead Fred. Um, a close second, I think, and I think I was 10, I believe. I'm going to have to double check it right now because I did see it in the movie theater and I absolutely loved it. 
Um, but let's just say I love Drop Dead Fred. I thought it's one of the uh, greatest movies ever. It's hilarious. It's funny. Um, Drop Dead Fred is a great movie. Um, oh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade as well. 1989, but do you I saw it in the it? movie theater. You did? I saw it in the movie theater. I remember. Okay. Cross Bay Boulevard. I saw it on Cross Bay Boulevard in, in, in Queens. There was a theater there. Now I think it's a Best Buy. So I would have to say my favorite movie before I was 10 was Land Before Time. <laughs> that movie Yo, is... I still quote, like, don't step on the crack or you break your mama's back. Peach Tree. I mean, dude, that movie is Ice Age before Ice Age. That movie is Toy Story before Toy Story. Stop it. Go watch this right now. Land Before Time. Fantastic. Mm. Dude, bra- Little Tree. Uh, uh, the Brave Little Toaster. That movie oh. was really sick. And Little Foot. The, the movie, the episode that never was on our show um, was... um. Um, an American Tale, where fought with Fife. Oh, dude, another great movie. Great movie. Oh. So I don't know if there's just one movie there, Buzz. You know, I can't. I can't. But I would say though. Okay, okay, man, you brought up Fife. Oh man, what do I like more? I think Fife wins. I think American Tale mm. was my my most watched when I was a kid. Like like my niece has Nemo as like that movie that you made your parents watch all the time. Fightful was like if you put on Fightful right now, I could probably I don't know it by heart, but I could probably speak it by heart once it starts to play. That movie, oh, see, Sandlot came out in nineteen ninety three. Yeah, but do you remember it? But we were I was over ten in nineteen ninety three. Exactly. So I I'm gonna say. Fifel. I have, I, I American Tale. I think I'm gonna be. I think it's like American Tale for me too. There's just something about that film. But I loved Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I watched it so many times. So maybe it's that. I don't know, man. I'm so torn because I watched so many weird movies of Star Wars and stuff before I was ten, like the original ones, and I would watch them all the time. But like, I think it has to be American Tale. Indiana Jones: The Last Crusade, Drop Dead Fred. I watched Drop Dead Fred a ton of times. Rented it to- so many times. Twins, big, no, cocktail. <laughs> See, none of these movies I liked as a kid. No. I liked it as you know, Roger yeah. Rabbit. That movie freaked me out. I couldn't Roger, watch. I loved Roger Rabbit. But when they like just like kill, when they murdered that shoe. That will oh. forever will be in my brain. And when he screamed at him, he was like, when I killed your brother. And I was like, oh what the God. fuck? It was crazy. But yeah, I'd have to say American Tale, Indiana Jones, and Last Crusade, Drop Dead Fred. So it's three movies. I don't know. Drop Dead Fred. Man. They have one more. They, they have, have another more. question. Yeah, they, they have one more question. Dude, karate Kid. But I see, I didn't watch that. I didn't watch it a bunch yeah, of times. I'm going to be honest. It, it was cartoons. So. Yeah, it was like American Tale, Land Before Time, yeah. those things. But still, Last Crusade. When did when did Little Fred. Mermaid come out? Oh, that was, a, that was, I think, I think I was over 10 at that point. Oh. Have to be. I'll double check when this episode is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even. <laughs> this is great. We should have done this live. 1989. We should have done this live. Yeah, we screwed up. <laughs> this should have been a live episode. This would have been, this would have gone on forever. Well, we could try to so, do another one. Sure. Okay. So, okay. Their last question was this: What would you change about your childhood if you could? I mean, is this like another regret one? About my childhood? Yeah. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Definitely not getting the water. The water talkies. <laughs> I think I'm good with my childhood. I think I think back now and I think like it was weird and hilarious and crazy. I got to fights when I was a kid, a kid and I needed to get into I a fight. I would have played more hockey. Roll hockey. Yeah, I would have rollerbladed Outside. more. How about that? I'm getting obsessed with rollerblades now. You know, man. I can't. I know, man. You, you won't shut up about it and then you started following them on our Instagram account and now I got to see 
all these inline rollerblades <laughs> like you're gonna go sketching tomorrow. <laughs> I, you're I not love going them. sketching. Just stop it, dude. Don't 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 do that. It might happen. But anyway, I think I would react. Yeah. Someone like rollerblade more or play hockey more because like I loved it when I came to Long Island and I just didn't get to do more of it. Other than that, I think I'm good in my childhood. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I don't know. Maybe play less baseball, do other things. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't really like little league. Yeah, no, no. like I would I would probably opt out of little league and go play other thing and like do yeah. other other things. Yeah. But like literally it was cool because like you, you like got to hang out with people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I probably, and then I probably would have tried to enjoy school more mm. because like they, someone did mention like we had it all. Like we got to see our friends every day. Nobody had to go to work. Mm-hmm. Six hours, six hours of hanging out with your friends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we complained about it. Couldn't wait to get out. And now. I think I would have, like, if I knew what I know now and I can go back to to school, I would have had a better time because I would have been like, this is all nonsense, so I don't care. Yeah, it's so cool. Like, I would have been like, I think I would have enjoyed it more. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let's just have a good time. Because, like, it's really going to get very serious, like, after we graduate here. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I was just about to say I would have not joined the marching band, but then I'm like, I wouldn't have gone to the World Series and see the Yankees win in 1996. Oh, that's awesome. And truthfully, that. that was the only reason to join the marching band in Mineola. And then the next year after that, it was a, it was, it was terrible. A, it was a torture. I fest. did it. I did it afterwards and it was terrible. I, I, it, it was the dumbest thing ever. I pretend to play the trombone. Dude, I told, I, w- we talked about it. This is one guy on, on here. We talked about Ryan. He stood there. He didn't even have really a mouthpiece really on the saxophone and he just walked in the parade next to me. He didn't give a shit. And I'm like, why did I care See, so that, much? That's why we needed to be more like him. Mike Silva was in the marching band. He that's played. Amazing. You know what's funny about him? He played saxophone. And if anyone knows Mike, check out the, uh, uh, what's the oh. fucking episode? <laughs> Iron Eagle episode. Iron Eagle. Uh, the spaghetti and meatballs dropped. That's Mike Silva. The spaghetti and meatballs. But the. <laughs> But Mike joined a marching man, decided, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to join the pit. I'm like, yeah, but you don't know how to play drums or anything. And he's like, yeah, "Yeah, I'll be fine. But see, Mike (laughs) is the type of person who, for some reason, he could just learn an instrument. I've seen this kid just play piano. And I'm like, what? (laughs) He's like, yeah, I was just thinking about something. And I was like, and he's like playing piano. And I'm like, son of a bitch. And he just joined the pit. And I'm like, he's just playing Yo, drums. I, I did the same thing Mike did. And then me and Owen uh, had got it. Like, we we only joined the band because everybody had such a good time the year before. We joined. We go to we band camp. Horrible. They're like, what are you going to do? We're going to be in percussion. The same day we were about to go to percussion, they're like, we need two um, tuba players. <laughs> you don't. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, we need two, two of you just stand in. So me and Owen just like stood in. They tried to make me and him go to classes sometimes. You know how they go to like practice? Yeah, I hated I it. I was like, no, I'm not going to that. Yeah. And they're like, no, you need to go. I'm like, I am not learning this instrument. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All I did so was me and him used to that. pretend to blow into it. We were like. And stand in the heat. And stand. Yeah. And hey, man, we knew our steps though. Yeah. We knew our steps. The marching man doesn't pass the nostalgia test. Um, Manny, that's it. That's all the questions. Shout out to everyone that sent the question. You'll see everyone's information in the show notes. Follow all those podcasts. Follow the websites. Follow these people. They're our friends. They're our creators. They're our comrades in this indie game that we're playing here. You know, out there creating stuff <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying anymore it's been hours that we've been doing this that tree is far away everybody keep sending your questions because we're going to do this again if you yeah. like this give us a five star rating follow us for more craziness just like this this is how the nostalgia test gets down and follow us on all social media you'll find it i'll put all the stuff there i'm not saying it i can't do it thanks for listening to today's episode Please subscribe to the Nostalgia Test podcast to know when new episodes drop. Don't forget to leave us five stars and a positive review so more people can find the podcast. Share your thoughts and memories on today's topic on our Twitter at Nostalgia Test and on Instagram at The Nostalgia Test. 
Tune in next time because you never know what pop culture will pop up on The Nostalgia Test. <laughs>